the weird history and future of UFOs. Hi there, I'm Jeff, and you are listening to Plain English Lesson Number 476. JR is the producer, and he has uploaded today's full lesson to plainenglish.com slash 476. Coming up today, the U.S. military is keeping a list of mysterious objects that pilots have seen in the sky or that have been caught on camera. Nobody knows what they are. Until recently, the list has been shrouded in secrecy. Nobody wanted to talk about those things publicly. One reason is the wacky history of UFOs in American culture. In the second half of today's lesson, I'll show you what it means to raise the stakes. And we have a quote of the week. Let's get started. Here's a tip in English. If you want to get an English speaker, especially an American of a certain age, to laugh, you just need to use three little letters. U-F-O. U-F-O stands for Unidentified Flying Object, and UFOs hold a special place in America's national lore. It all started in the 1940s, when a civilian pilot said he saw nine objects all flying in formation. These objects, he said, were round and flat, the shape of a frisbee or a saucer. A saucer is the small dish that goes underneath a coffee cup. The pilot, Kevin Arnold, said these discs were flying at almost 2,000 kilometers per hour. The strong implication was that this was an alien life form that had come to visit the Earth. This report set off a nationwide media frenzy. Soon, people who saw something or thought they saw something strange in the sky would report it to the government and the news media claiming to have seen a UFO. People all across America wanted to get in on the action, and they sent letters and made phone calls reporting UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Convinced they had seen evidence of aliens, people contacted their elected representatives they contacted the military, they contacted scientists, they contacted new pseudo-experts in UFOs, and they contacted the media. It was a national frenzy. Then, in the early 1960s, a married couple from the rural state of New Hampshire raised the stakes. Barney and Betty Hill claimed that they had been driving in a rural part of their state and they saw a UFO. They kept driving and tracking it across the sky until finally it lowered itself over their car. It was a spaceship, they said. 
they said they could see the aliens in the spaceship and that they, Barney and Betty Hill of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, were abducted by those aliens, knocked unconscious, and dropped off 35 miles from their car. After seeing the publicity around their story, other people started claiming that they too had been abducted by aliens. The term UFO then became synonymous with hallucinations, conspiracy theories, and people who believed aliens were invading the earth. Even so, it's a topic that got serious attention. The U.S. military looked into it, and Congress held public hearings investigating UFOs. The UFO craze eventually died down. The last congressional hearing on the topic was in 1969. By the 1990s, UFOs had become the joke that they are today. Loony people from long ago who looked up into the sky and thought aliens were coming to Earth. Ha ha ha. Movies like Independence Day, Mars Attacks, and E.T. depicted UFOs as dystopia, comedy, or an endearing fantasy of children. UFO, as a term, is associated with the wacky conspiracy theories about aliens. But there are still things flying through the sky that cannot be identified with any scientific certainty. Today, the polite term for those is called unidentified aerial phenomena. And the U.S. Congress recently held its first hearing in over half a century on UFOs, or, as we now call them, unidentified aerial phenomena. The objective was to bring more transparency to something that is really a serious issue. The U.S. Navy has a database of over 400 incidents that cannot be explained. Many of them were reported by military pilots who saw something in the sky that they could not identify as something else. Often, a pilot adds an item to the list and the military investigates and discovers the cause. For example, the hearings featured a video in which a spherical shape appeared in a video clip for just a few seconds and disappeared. In another, a series of green triangles appeared in the sky. An investigation found the green triangles were just a drone. It was the camera's lens that caused them to appear green in the image. After a lengthy investigation, the military also determined another mysterious object was a balloon. But not every observation can be explained. This type of inquiry is important because aircraft are getting smaller and quieter. It's legitimate for a country's military to investigate 
whether private individuals or another country's government are using small aerial aircraft like drones for espionage or other purposes. That, alas, is what this list is for. The military wants to know if another person or country is using a small flying vehicle or drone to spy, conduct cyber warfare, or otherwise threaten the country. But for years, the history of UFOs has impeded this type of inquiry. Military pilots didn't report anything strange they saw in the sky, afraid that they'd be laughed at. As for the reports that did exist, the military kept them under wraps out of fear that they would invite public ridicule or ignite a new UFO craze. This new report and the congressional hearings were intended to bring transparency to the issue of modern espionage, defense, and warfare. Still, the U.S. Navy knows its history, or at least its cinema. At the congressional hearing, Navy officers were at pains to emphasize that none of the objects were non-terrestrial in origin, meaning from another planet, and that none had attempted to communicate with military pilots. The UFO craze lives on today, and here's why. The headline that made it out of these hearings was Congress Investigates UFOs. And the media knows exactly what they're doing when they write headlines like that. It's clickbait, so that what you think as a reader is that Congress is holding hearings on aliens landing on the Earth, when in fact it was much less interesting than that. Today's English expression is raise the stakes. When you raise the stakes on something, you increase the risk or the significance of something. And stakes is usually the word we use to describe how much money you're betting in a game of poker, for example. So if you go to a casino, you can choose to play at a low stakes table where the bets are small. Or you could play at a high stakes table where the bets are big. At a high stakes table, you can win a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money. So whenever you raise the stakes, you increase how much can be gained or lost in a situation. Earlier today, you heard about the UFO craze. People discovered that a surefire way to get media attention was to claim that they had seen a flying saucer. And it could be, maybe, that aliens were visiting the Earth. But then, Barney and Betty Hill from New Hampshire raised the stakes. They said, that they had been driving on rural roads in New Hampshire, in the northeastern part of the United States. They saw something strange up near the moon. Then 
it got bigger as it came down closer to earth. And, holy cow, it started descending right on their vehicle. They saw between eight and eleven aliens. And then, they said, they lost consciousness and woke up 35 miles from their car. Now, to their credit, they didn't seek publicity. They told some people at their church, then told some people at the government. Only later did someone write a book about their experience in 1975, a television movie starring James Earl Jones came out about their experience. Now, in the lesson, I said that the hills raised the stakes. So how did they raise the stakes? Because now, it was no longer enough to just see a flying saucer in the sky. If you really wanted media attention, you had to say you were abducted by aliens. Merely seeing an alien spaceship was like playing at the low-stakes poker table. Fine, fine, everybody sees that stuff. But if you really want attention, now you needed to say you were abducted by aliens. The stakes were higher. And so, for years, people claimed that they had been abducted by aliens. Now, admittedly, that was not the most typical way to use raise the stakes. So let me give you a few more traditional examples. I'm in a fantasy baseball league with some friends. Fantasy sports is a game you play where you create your own pretend team of real sports players, and you see how your pretend team does against the other teams based on how the real players do in real games. Well, in my league, we have rankings and prizes for the winners. But a small group of us decided to raise the stakes just within the six of us. We said that the losing team has to buy dinner for the rest of this small group at the beginning of the next year. So that raised the stakes a little bit. That made it more important. Now, instead of just being able to win the prize, we could now either win a free dinner or be stuck paying for the rest of the group. We added that complexity. We added the extra prize. So we raised the stakes. Here's another example. Costa Rica is battling cyber criminals. The small Central American country suffered a ransomware attack that has affected entire government departments. The criminals demanded a $10 million payment. After Costa Rica's government didn't pay, they raised the stakes. The criminal group demanded now $20 million to release the government computer systems from their control. We've talked about the war for talent and how companies are doing their best to attract talented workers. During the pandemic, many workers decided they wanted a better work-life balance and they requested more time off. So some companies under pressure to keep employees happy, 
started giving more vacation. But then a small number of employers raised the stakes and gave their employees unlimited vacation. Now, unlimited vacation doesn't mean you get paid for doing nothing. It just means that the company doesn't count or track vacation time. They'll evaluate employees by their productivity and their contribution. The companies that offered unlimited vacation raised the stakes. Now, potential employees have more to gain by asking for more vacation time. And the risk is higher for employers that don't offer generous vacation. One more example. Finland has applied to join NATO, a security alliance. NATO was originally designed to help countries protect one another against the Soviet Union. Until now, NATO countries shared 754 miles of border with Russia. But if Finland joins NATO, the border will more than double to 1,584 miles. And that will raise the stakes of security in Europe. Finland and neighboring Sweden both want to join NATO. If they do, then two European countries with modern armies would join a military alliance. But they would also be a lot closer to Russia, which feels threatened by NATO. So if these two countries do join NATO, you could say they would be raising the stakes in the competition between Russia and Europe. Now it's time for the quote of the week, and here it is. It's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. That's by Abraham Lincoln, an American president. It's not the years in your life that count, he said, but the life in your years. Well, that's all for today, Monday, June 13th, 2022. This was lesson number 476. So remember, you can get the full lesson content at plainenglish.com slash 476. Coming up on Thursday, you've probably used Google Maps to get directions from one place to another. But I'll tell you about some hidden tools in Google Maps that you might not know about and that might save you some time and frustration in the future. That's all on Thursday. See you then. <music>